Hi, welcome back to another episode of uh, Holistic Wellness. My name is um, Dr. Rama Prasad. I practice Ayurveda in Australia for the last 21 years, studied in India. Um, so today's topic is um, reversing uh, Ayurvedic nutrition to reverse age and remove diseases. So I need to give you a brief introduction about uh, aging and diseases. We are not talking about age that's normal. Generally aging represents abuse related um, discomforts and uh, signs and symptoms um, such as um, eyes, you know, skin wrinkles and um, you know, disability, so various kinds such as locomotion, digestion, memory, etc. So when you live a healthy life, aging becomes, aging is a part of it and it's normal and aging doesn't really give you any disability. The aging we are talking about here is the disability generating, discomfort uh, generating aging due to not following your body's uh, rules and uh, nature's rules. Um, so how do we remove those symptoms um, will be our topic today. Second one is disease. Generally um, most diseases will fall into depletion related or inflammation related generally generalizing and um, both needs more nutrients and um, lots of anti-inflammatory uh, approach. So we're going to work on these two topics with Ayurvedic nutrition. Now Ayurvedic nutrition here um, is not just Ayurvedic nutrition. Um, it's based on the, the nutrition we are talking about will be based on Ayurvedic principles, yogic principles. It will be based on uh, human physiology, Western or modern physiology, and it's found in ancient cultures such as um, Russia, India, um, South America, etc. So it's a form of age stabilizing, vitality improving um, nutrition program which will, in effect, get rid of your symptoms and um, most pathologies. So we will um, get into it. Body is designed for digesting one meal a day. This is uh, human physiology, yogic principles and ancient cultures. One proper meal a day. Um, if you remember um, the British, ray, uh, British saying about food, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a princess, and dinner like a pauper. So big breakfast, mini lunch, nothing for dinner. It's a British phrase. The Russian phrase is this, eat breakfast for yourself, share your lunch, and give your dinner to your enemies. Again, large breakfast, mini-sized lunch, and nothing for dinner. Why do they say this? There's a reason. Physiology says you need eight hours to digest a meal. Eight solar hours to digest a meal. To get eight solar hours to digest a meal, when would you eat? When would be your last meal of the day? That's one question. If you ask a physiologist, out of these eight solar hours that you need to digest a meal, how much is really important? He'll say four hours. Four solar hours, this is where the food is in, the, in your stomach and small intestine. And then the last four, uh, four hours is in your large intestine where, where water is extracted and some minerals will come out of it. So. The first four hours, really important. Second four hours, last four hours, not that important. So if you need at least four solar hours to digest a meal, when would you eat that meal? This is when the most modern physiology, 
and ancient cultures, they come to the same conclusion. If sun sets around, at around 6 o'clock and you need 4 solar hours to digest a meal, the last meal of the day will be at 2 o'clock or just before that. The first meal can be early in the morning, any time. So what if we have a plan for large breakfast, small lunch, in between a snack, if you want, and um, make these meals and snacks as big as possible and as nutrient rich as possible so that you don't need anything for dinner. There's no point in starving at dinner time. You need to bring yourself to a place where you don't need dinner. No one is against dinner. But if you don't get enough from your breakfast, uh, body can't process it. That undigested nutrients can turn into your future diseases and disabilities. So putting all these ideas together, if you create a, a nutrition plan, it'll be something like this large breakfast in the beginning large lunch and as a result you're not hungry in the evening so what do you do have a soup a clear soup or a blended thin soup so that you don't feel like you're starving it's like starting the day with a full tank of petrol so you don't need to stop at every service station so it gives you the freedom to move around. Similarly, if you have a proper breakfast, that will give you the freedom to gain all, all the energy you need, extract all the energy you need from that food and cruise through the day. And what else you need? Might be a little snack at around 11 o'clock and a medium meal at around 1.30. And you got four hours, four day hours, solar hours to digest that meal. So when we come back, we will talk about how do we do this and how do we make it um, happen with more details. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the Ayurvedic Nutrition. I'm Dr. Rama Prasad and um, let's apply it to our um, lives. Now, when you try to eat a large breakfast, how large is large? Same thing with lunch. There are certain simple steps you can take to make this easy, practical, and fully effective. One thing I have noticed, one interesting factor I've noticed in the clinic over the last 30 years is when we are hungry, we are almost like hangry. We can't stop. And suddenly carbohydrates, sugars and starch will be in charge, not us. The moment you are hungry, the carbs are in charge. Now, carbs have got a problem. If you are on a high carb diet, Based on all the researches you have done, we have done, the West and modern research has done, they create or aggravate inflammation. And every, in, in the first part of this uh, program, we saw that most diseases are inflammation based or depletion based. Of course, there are degeneration and autoimmune, all those things, but generally speaking. So, if you have an inflammation and you're eating pro-inflammatory or inflammation aggravating food items excessively then there's no way you can reverse your health condition plus high carb items don't have a lot of nutrients this is why they are cheap look at the gra grab and go food say you have a steamed a kilo of steamed rice sitting in one bowl and a kilo of steamed broccoli sitting in the other bowl look at the amount of money you have invested the rice might have, might have taken 50 cents to produce, to cook, uh, by the time it's cooked. It's around 50 cents, say one, one dollar. A kilo of broccoli ready to eat, steamed, might take 10 dollars to get there. So how come a kilo of rice is one dollar? 
and a kilo of broccoli is $10. There's a reason. There's a lot of nutrients, minerals and vitamins in the broccoli in all low carb vegetables. Whereas in the rice, there's nothing or very little. Um, rice can constipate you. Broccoli is full of fibers. Rice causes inflammation and aggravates inflammation. Broccoli is opposite of that. Rice is sedative. Broccoli is energy releasing. Rice is, is an oxidant, whereas broccoli is an antioxidant, full of antioxidant. It can go on and on for the whole day. This is why grains and high starch items are cheaper. There's no much nutrients in them, plus they can make you sick. If you have a carb dominant diet, then we are talking about low energy, can't enjoy life as other people do, etc. So to make your breakfast completely uh, effective, first of all, we need to eat before you're hungry. A few minutes before you're hungry, you must start. That's when you are in charge. Once you're hungry, we saw the carbs are in charge. You will go for the carbs. 10 minutes before you are hungry, you are in charge, you can eat what you need to eat. So this is when you eat the low carb and highly nutritious food items. Once you start this, the next stage, in the next stage, um, next step is to increase your breakfast every day by 20 grams of 30 grams, if possible 50 grams. The more you eat, the better, but in a very safe, nice way. Always talk to your health professional before you get into it. Do the same thing with snack, a uh, low carb snack. Don't wait until you fall off the cliff into a, a free free flow, a free fall into the carb bowl. Don't wait until you are free falling into the carb bowl. So just before you need a snack, have a snack you know uh, and get into a good healthy tasty um, snack same thing with lunch eat your lunch uh, just before you're hungry and make it big and every day add another 20 or 30 grams to it within 10 days you're eating a huge breakfast and seriously large lunch how much breakfast should we have that's a common question I hear um, based on my observation over the last 20 years, you can go up to 1% of your body weight. So if you're 60 kilos in weight, your breakfast size could be around anything around 600 grams, same as lunch. So stage one is try to bring your breakfast and lunch as big as possible. As a result, in the evening you're not hungry. If you're not hungry, don't tell the world you're not hungry. It's, uh, it's very upsetting for most people. So. Just ask for a big soup. Clear soup is much better. Uh, blended thin soup is even fantastic, even more fantastic. So once you do these three steps, one, eat before you're, you're hungry, eat a low carb, which is highly nutritious, and three, make your breaks and lunch progressively larger. At one stage, in, you know, dinner won't be an issue. The moment in dinner is not necessary for you, but you're still having a soup or light something, everything is reversed or everything starts reversing. You start losing all the symptoms, signs of aging, signs of uh, you know, wrinkles and stuff like that. People who go on uh, this program in my clinic, um, who most, most of them will also take certain herbs, to, to accelerate the healing. I've seen amazing results such as cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, uh, arthritis, uh, dermatitis, etc. slowly um, subsiding completely. Now losing diseases is only one thing. Their vitality goes back to when they were like in their 20s. Uh, suddenly they can wake up refreshed, their energy is back, vitality is immunity is back. Uh, they talk about life in a different way. Um, so that's a um, discussion on Ayurvedic nutrition. If you have questions, please contact me. Otherwise, um, we are coming back with another topic next week, which is 
understanding who you are or oh, in other words I have the concept of body types this is a fantastic topic because we need to start from where we are and who we are this changes radically changes your life thank you for being with us today and this is dr. Rama Prasad bye for now